<laughs> Hi there. Did you enjoy drawing the faces and hair of the characters from our last video? Great kid, don't get cocky. There's gonna be a lot more stuff in this lesson than before, so this one will be longer than the others. Get ready to throw down a lot of lines. First things first, gather up your most expensive art supplies. Is it Christmas time? Do you even celebrate Christmas? Doesn't matter. Let's use that busted up pencil with the poinsettias. Look for the signature missing eraser, identifying this writing stick as genuine garbage. All right, you get it. Art supplies don't matter for this one. I'm poor, let's draw. <laughs> Female number one. First, let's start with the pants. Draw a horizontal line just above the squashed V partway between guidelines three and four. For the bottom of the shorts, draw two more lines at a slight inward angle extending past her legs a little bit. Now, connect the ends of the lines together to complete the outline. For the details, start with some mismatched horizontal and vertical lines at her waistband for her belt loops and stuff. We can toss in some curved lines for the pockets too, although let's be honest ladies, your pockets are never as big as you need them to be anyways. Let's add some wrinkles radiating out from where her legs meet. Erase the guidelines and move on to her shirt. Start with a rectangle thing at her wrist for the elastic band of her sleeve. Then extend short lines from the top corners at an outward angle. Connect it to her shoulder and armpit, then repeat on the other side. Now add a wide U at the top of her chest for the collar of her shirt. Erase the guidelines, but keep where the breasts overlap the armpits. Wrinkles can go diagonally in between the breasts, swooping from the bottom edges inward, and radiating from the armpits. You can also add one or two from the wrist where the loose material meets the tighter elastic band on her wrist. We will call these flower wrinkles. Onto the boots. Add rectangles covering her ankles and extend two lines from the top corners of the rectangle halfway to her knee, then connect them to a point in the middle. Erase the guidelines. Actually, I think it'll look better if you bring the top part of the boot in a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. Now for our simple male. Variation number one. We're gonna start with his shirt because it'll overlap the waist of his pants. After a slightly lower horizontal line as before, draw two lines at an inward angle across the tops of his arms for the sleeves of his shirt. Now connect the end to his shoulder. The inside ends meet his torso. Draw a U for the collar, erase the guidelines, and don't forget his belly button. And hers too. Ah, oh. oh, that was close. Make the same wrinkles in the shirt as before, except without the wrinkles in the middle of the chest. Variación numero dos. Instead of drawing shorts, make two horizontal lines crossing just below his ankles that are a bit wider than the top of his foot. Now, connect the ends to his hip and where the legs meet. Draw the same wrinkles as before, except now we're gonna add a couple of fancier wrinkles to the pants. On the outside, make a line curving inward, creating a little gap. I find that jeans normally have one or two mostly below the knees, then a couple of smaller ones closer together where it bunches up by the ankles. I will refer to this type of wrinkle as super overlap folds and use it frequently. Squigglies often occur at the knees as well. Variation number three. Draw three horizontal lines on his shoes, making the bottom one curved upward for the toe. Now you can darken the lines that are lighter than the others and fix the stuff you don't like. Let's make the hands a little bigger. Remember, being a perfectionist can be both an artist's greatest strength and weakness. On to our Illuminati assassin. The trick to making this assassin look cool and dangerous is gonna be to layer her clothes. Draw a wide V from her shoulders down to her chest in the middle. Draw another V below that one that touches guideline three. Now, draw another V at her neck crossing guideline two. Now let's draw less than and greater than symbols at the top of her neck around the V that we just made. Complete the overlapping outline, add a couple of swooping wrinkles, and you got yourself a mini assassin's cloak with a folded down hood. Congratulations. Now for the arms. 
draw rectangles just like our first simple girl, except these will be just below her elbows at guideline 3. Then extend short lines from the top corners at an outward angle just like the first character we did. Variation numbers something, I don't know, I lost track. I told you there was a lot to this one. Details to the arms. Draw some super overlap folds and flower wrinkles to the poofy part up top. Let's take a sec to make sure all the lines are the same darkness. Cool. Now let's add some angled lines across the bottom part like ninja wraps. Now color in her hands except for where the T is for fingerless gloves. Ah, mayonnaise, we can't forget her daggers. Draw light guidelines for where the daggers will be at an inward angle crossing the T, which is where her fingers meet together. You'll have to use your imagination to see if that angle will work or not. Draw some loopies from the T for the handles, then add some sharp schlink schlunk to the other side for the blades. Notice that the cross guards cannot be seen. That's because she's holding them backwards, so they would be behind her hands. I always mess up on that part, so I have to use pencils to see where the cross guards go. Normal swords have the cross guards at the thumb, but if you hold it backwards, it's at the pinky. All right, onto the skirt. Halfway between guideline three and four, the horizontal line at the waist can be at a slight angle because she's too cool to wear her clothes symmetrically. Now draw a curved line between guidelines four and five for the bottom of the skirt, then connect it back to the waist. We can also add a thing down the middle. I don't know what it's called, but today I will call it a skirt tongue. That's pretty much a wavy rectangle from the waist past her knees at guideline five. Erase the guidelines, and now we can add some wrinkles. Some flower wrinkles at the top where it folds into the skirt, and some super overlappers and swoopers. Nice! Let's add some crisscross lines to make a wrap-like material around her midsection. Now let's give her some badass assassin boots. Don't worry, I'll keep it G. Draw V's covering her ankles at guideline six. Then connect them to her legs, meeting each other just below her knee at guideline five. Now add the poofy parts like we've done before with the arms and add a couple of flower wrinkles, some super overlappers and swoopies. Darken the feet, erase the guidelines and our assassin is ready to- uh, Hey Mike, I think he's gonna make the shin guard skinnier. Yeah, Bob, it doesn't really matter, but that's the point of this competition. That's true. In this sport, you gotta waste time and make changes that don't matter. The judges will definitely give him style points for that one. Okay, moving on to our warrior. Let's give this guy some cool armor around the waist. First, start with a crooked horizontal line above his belly button. Again, way too cool for symmetry. Now extend the lines down his sides to his lower thigh between guidelines four and five and curve up, crossing the middle to guideline four. Now add the skirt tongue coming down to meet guideline number five. Make it wide enough to cover up his thighs a little more. We all know what's beneath that kilt. That's right, freedom, Merka. Add some crooked rectangles crossing guideline number four for the belts. Erase the guidelines and where they overlap. Now for the boots. Add some squiggly ovals just below his knees at guideline number five. This will represent fur. Then add a lazy rainbow over his feet and connect it just above his ankles at guideline six. Use the super overlap technique to finish him off. For his forearm guards, draw lines at an inward angle below his elbow and crossing his wrist. These first two lines will point toward his cute little warrior belly button. Now connect them, adding a little bend on the inside. You can darken and adjust the hands if needed. Covering his shoulder, draw a turtle shell shape that's straight on the side that's near his head. Now bring that top corner down to meet his hair. Now make a rainbow across the top of his waist armor covering where his abs would be. To add a strap, connect the circle to the corner of the shoulder plate with two parallel lines. For his sword, start with a guideline like we did with the daggers that crosses the T. Now add a rectangle covering the T in his hand for the cross guard. Now make another rectangle that ends in a point along the guideline. Draw a line down the middle to indicate the varied slope of the blade. Now, along the guideline, draw a swooshy thing for the handle to complete the hilt. Erase the guidelines, redraw what you over erased, and that's it. Thanks Shut for watching. Shut up, Andrew. It's time to play.
O C D Artist. Welcome back to the semifinals of O C D Artist, where each artist does their best to adjust the drawing without making it any better than it was before. It looks like our competitor is using the super overlap technique on the shoulder plate. That's not regulation, Mike. Now he's adding a buckle to the strap. It looks like he might have actually researched how belt buckles attach in order to make his drawing more accurate. Now he's using the super overlap technique on the forearm guards. Bob, he's adding more belt buckles to the midsection. I am so confused right now. Yeah, that's the unique thing about this sport, Mike. The goal is to make changes that don't matter. Maybe it's just me, but the more visual information this competitor is adding, the better the drawing is actually looking. Yeah, Bob, I don't know what the officials will say about this one, but he is really pressing his luck here, adding a pommel to the handle to complete the hilt, and now decorative embellishments to the midsection. Yeah, Mike, I think he could end up disqualified. Yeah, Bob, it's amazing how adding some simple designs Designs to the armor can take your drawings to the next level. I agree, it's definitely looking a lot better. The judges will not like that. We gotta put an end to this madness. I'll see what I can do. I can't reach him. I think I need to lie down. A serrated edge to the blade? Mike. Mike? Mike! Talk to me! I need a medic in the booth! Cut to commercial! Hey guys, thanks for watching. My name is Andrew Bosch, and this is the third video in a series of four. Next one is gonna be shading these characters, and I will also be doing the same series in chibi, manga, and realistic styles, as well as digital painting in the advanced ones. So, subscribe to keep up with the videos to come, and until we meet again, have a beautiful day. Thanks for watching. Bye.